The Elven Archer. What can it do? Is it any good? So this thing has, I would say, like average health. Pretty okay, like magic attack. Uh, kind of below average physical attack. Good magic defense, good accuracy. It's an evasion tank. All the elves have high evasion. Its initiative is also pretty decent. Now, in this case, we have a defensive go-getter. So, Ridiel, where you say her name. Uh, she has okay stats, like, for combat. Now, obviously, I would rather her be on, like, be an offensive go-getter if I'm going to be running that, but let's look at what the class can do. So, five stamina, infantry, ranged assist type, can provide range assist allies. Now, look at all the types this thing is. <laughs> Bow, Infantry, Archer, Caster, Elven. Now luckily things don't really hard counter casters for bonus damage or archers for bonus damage, and in most cases Elven. So really the infantry is the type that you'd have to be considerate of for when enemies use attacks on them. As party leaders though, they're, they are quite slow at 100 mobility, and the range assists they can provide are decent. The abilities themselves. All right, so we have Wind Arrow. So this is a hybrid attack that has 100 50 combined potency or 75 physical 75 magical so you leverage both of these stats in this class when attacking for all of its attacks so attack a single enemy inflicts evasion minus 50 now this does not have true hit so it doesn't necessarily make it easier to hit a very high evasion enemy but it is nice for the damage mostly and for just like poking something out after you have a big combo go off typically this unit is going to be supporting a huge combo, and we'll get into that pretty soon. Uh, Mystic Conferral adds 50 potency uh, for magic potency to an ally's attacks. So this doesn't last for one attack, and you can throw this on row attacks, column attacks, board nukes, and it boosts the damage, and it continually boosts the damage of their future attacks beyond those. So typically this is something used early on in a combo, you combine the high initiative of the units with this active ability to throw it on some kind of huge damage and it typically is worth it. Icicle Arrow. So it's another split attack, 75 potency for both magical and physical. Attack two enemies, inflicts freeze. Now you can change the conditions on this to hit key targets, but typically this is good for cleaning up enemies if there's two enemies left. So I would just set the condition to... I actually set it last night, but... <laughs> I did not save it because I was doing theory crafting live on stream. So let's go to, let's see, it's one of these. You want, I think enemies, yeah. Two or more enemies. So it will, it will default, so you can do this. So first action, and then it can do two or more enemies. And then if there's not two or more enemies, it'll just win narrow. And sometimes this can be the difference between a killer or not. If it's something is like a healer and it's, tanking this, and this is the difference between killing, the second attack can kill. Alright, quick cure. Activates after an ally is debuffed. Remove all debuffs from an ally, grants the target immunity to one debuff. Now this is a utility damage, like combo piece I would say. It does utility, it supports, it also does damage. And quick cure is just an example of that. Selfless heal, activates after being healed, so if this gets healed, it flips heal to all allies, like it gives a 50% potency heal, and it also removes all debuffs. So if you just trigger some kind of heal on this, and you are not using it in these in the build I'm about to outline, you can have this cleanse debuffs off of heal, which is quite nice. And then you have Peer Field, activates at the start of battle, grants all allies a buff that negates a single debuff. So this class is very good at cleansing debuffs and preventing debuffs. And then of course for its valor skill, Merciful Rain, conjure a rain, or conjure rain in a set direction, restoring 10% HP to allied units within duration 15 seconds. Healing occurs once every second. So the way this works, actually I can just demo it. Have you need of me? This is actually really good for pushing. So you can see like the line. So if like if I'm pushing this way, and I have a bunch of units pushing into a huge group of enemies and I follow the rain, I, shall weather the storm yet. I can heal up to 150% if I'm continually taking damage from combats. Or if I'm pushing like a siege like this, for example. So it heals quite a lot, and you can just follow the rain and fight things. It also will douse flames. 
All right, so we'll just kill this really quick. Glory to the liberation. Okay. So those are its abilities. Uh, let's look at an example build. So in this case, we have a Unifi board nuke, and it's supported by a druid, and it's supported by Ridial. <laughs> I still don't know how to say that, dude. Uh, so what we can do is as soon as the battle starts, because I have insanely high initiative, I will Mystic Conferral uh, Unifi so that she gets bonus damage, and then quick impetus her so that she can act again, and then afterwards I'm sitting on two active points, and I can Icicle Arrow once, or I can Wind Arrow. Now you could also have someone else use quick impetus in this case, but for this particular build, I think that the Elven Archer's big value is the Mystic Conferral for the board nuke, and then the quick impetus as a combo piece. Now you can run these as like a general like icicle spammer, so it spams icicle arrow as much as it can, which would be two times. Uh, but typically I would say its best use case is like a support role. And I do think it's really good at that because there are very few things in the game that can actively give a buff to something else. Now there are other ways to increase damage, but this is one of the most straightforward ways. You just give potency and then also if I wanted to, I could give her some other effect. So for example, if I wanted to powerful call, oops. If I wanted to just powerful call, I could do that. Quick impetus is not limited. So when you use quick impetus on something, if they're using an attack, you can also hit them with like a powerful call or some kind of additional buff. So basically this frees up a limited slot so if you were to mystic conferral through a witch it would be a passive limited and you cannot also add in this extra thing this powerful call so this is pretty huge value now you could also if you really wanted to in this case run a gambler's coin because she is going to be giving herself true hits so gambler's coin is perfectly fine here uh, but you basically get to stack this actively with another limited passive before you do like a huge board attack or a row attack and you can use this on multiple things it just takes multiple turns so for example i could be mystic conferral her and then later on mystic conferral clive if it mattered uh, this team tends to kill things quickly but the general overall build i would say that this thing excels in is like this kind of support combo piece so let's Don't demo it The heal is also nice too. If you use the heal correctly, especially if you actually take damage, and some of these matchups we're not going to be taking any damage. Alright, so Curse Swamp to reduce initiative from the Shaman. Defensive Curse on their front line to damage, or to increase our damage to their front line. Mystic Conferral, Unifi. Then she charges Glacial and then gets Impetus. Eagle Eye, Powerful Call, and they're dead. <laughs> and they're all dead now. <laughs> so this is one of the combo pieces that fits well into this team comp. And if they survive, you still have two active points. I have Clive, who didn't do anything yet. Unifi still has like a passive point or two to do her follow-up attack with. So it's a pretty good enabler for like these crazy combos. And it uniquely has this cheap conferral that it can use as an active ability. Now, if you wanted to run this in a different situation, like some some or some kind of other role, uh, I do think this is like the best weapon for it overall because all of its attacks are hybrid attacks. So you really want to leverage the magical physical weapons. And ideally, if you like want to do a single attribute weapon, you want to run the magic bows if there are any. I think there's like one. There's like Phantom Knights. She has higher magical attack than she does. Stel or spell Steel is also fine. It's pretty similar stats, but you also get magic defense on that bow. But there's like few bows that this class really wants. So like Spell Steel, Great Wood Spirit Bow. You can try to run physical bows on it, but it definitely does better with magical and hybrid bows. If we look at the stats. Yeah, 32 physical attack versus 57 magical attack. Uh, but overall, I think this is a pretty good class. A lot of people underrate it and think it's kind of bad. But it has 
this ability to damage boost any allies attacks as an active ability which is qu quite valuable and it also has good poke damage or after now some people run this thing on physical bows and find its damage to be lower do not run it on just like a physical bow you could run it on something like oh, where's the initiative plus like this if you just want initiative you'll lose a lot of damage doing this but this will give you initiative and evasion which can help so it is like if you don't plan on killing you can use a bow for utility but just know that you are going to be throwing out damage but if your combo works most of the time and you don't need the damage from it it can be fine so you can switch bows based on what you need of course uh, but that's it for this one definitely like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and found this useful uh, overall i do think this class is pretty good and it deserves a place on certain teams and i'll see you next one peace